Hey guys, Musical Teacher back here again, and uh, today we're going to be doing some Ozymandias. So, by me, Ozymandias. Now, you're probably just wondering what this guy is. Um, this is Pers Persley, Percy Shelley. Percy Shelley was a romantic poet who only really became famous after sorry about this after his death he wrote Ozymandias in 1817 after hearing about how an Italian explorer had retrieved a statue from the desert Now about the poem, the narrator meets a traveller who tells him about a statue standing in the middle of the desert. It's a statue of a king who ruled a past civilization. His face is proud and he accurately boasts about how powerful he is an in inscription of the statue's base. However, the statue has fallen down and crumbled away so that the ruin remains. Now there's some things which you must know form on the poem. The poem is sonnet with a turning point falter at line nine like a Persian sonnet. However, it does not follow a regular sonnet r rhyme scheme, perhaps reflecting the way that human power and structures can be destroyed. It is imic pediment, but this is also often structured. Structure of the poem, the narrator builds up an image of the statue by focusing on different parts of it in the, of it in turn. The poem ends describing their more enormous power, which helps sum up the insignificance of the statue. Irony in the poem. There's nothing left to show for for the ruler's arrogant and boasting of his great civilization. The ruined statue can be seen as a symbol of the temporary nature of political power or human achievements. Sally's use of irony reflects his hatred of op oppressions and his belief that it is possible to outturn as political order. Language of the poor language of power in the poem. The power focuses on the power of Ozymandias, re representing human power. However, his power has been lost, lost and is only visible due to the power of art. U ultimately, nature has ruined the statue, showing the nature and time have more power than anything else. Angry language in the poem. The trinity of the ruler is just through aggressive language. And here is a poem which I'll read to you now. Ozymandias, I met a traveller from an ancient land who stood too fast and trunkless legs of sand, stone. Sand stand in the desert near them on the sand, half shrunk. A shattered fidget lies, who frown, and wrinkled lip, and a snay of cold command. Tell at its sculpture, sculpture with those passions read, which yet survive, stamped on those lifeless things, the hand that mocked them, the heart that fed, and the ped pedestal those words appear. My name is Ozymandias, kings of kings, look on my works, ye mighty and despair. Nothing besides remains round the decay of that classical wreck, boundless and bare. The lone and level sands stretch far away. Now feelings and attitude in the poem, which is pride, arrogance and power. Pride, the ruler, was proud of what he achieved. He called on other rulers to admire what he did. Arrogance, 
The inscriptions show that Ruda believed that he was more powerful, he was the most powerful ruler in the land. Nobody else could compete with him. He also thought he was better than those he ruled. And power. Human civilization achievements created insignificance compared to the passing of time. Art has the power to preserve elements of human existence but is also temporary. Thank you for watching. Uh, please like, comment and subscribe.